Hello YouTube, today we will be talking about the government structure of Skyrim. And I also want to say hello to the more than 2000 extra subscribers since my exciting video on the Imperials and Stormcloaks. And who won the war. And presumably after hearing this topic, um, bye bye. <laughs> But for serious, since I did a couple of politically themed videos on this channel, I got this request very often for this topic. And after a week on working of this video, I finally feel like I have enough info. So with that said, let's immediately kick off with this video. So first of all let's go from the lowest level of rule to the highest level of rule. For that I need a village. So let's take Rorikstad for example, because it's in Whiterun Hold and has one of the biggest and that is one of the biggest holds with one of the most elaborate governments to pick apart. So a small community like Rorikstad within a hold does not have an appointed leader, not, not something official. Usually in these communities disputes get fixed by the guards who presumably have their own leader per community. But in smaller communities without guards, or sometimes even when there are guards, the decisions get made by a community leader. In the case of Rorikstad, this is presumably Rorik, the, pre the presumed founder of the village. But since there are guards, his influence is a bit less than in other communities where there are community leaders. These are for example farmsteads and other small villages. All these people in the village, including the guards, have sworn all fealty to the, to the Jarl, and there's only so much they can do without his approval. When either the community leader or the local guards have a matter they feel goes above their heads, they will refer you to the second and more official level of government, the Jarl's Palace, within it, the Jarl's Court. So let's say it's a matter of safety to the community. A large flock of bears has been sighted. The people of the village don't feel safe anymore and complain with the community leader. He or the person who complained will then go to the guards. Who goes to the guards is a matter of how big the settlement is. In a large village it will most likely be the community leader who will approach the guards, but in a very small settlement with only one or two guards it might just be the person who complained. And then the guards will decide whether they can deal with this themselves or they cannot deal with, themse with it themselves. This step with going to the guards is of course skipped in a village without guards. When they find out no we can deal with them ourselves, they or someone in their stead will be sent to the Jarl's palace. In communities without the guards, uh, the community leader will send someone to the Jarl's palace. This is best seen in the intro of Skyrim, where the two most prominent citizens of Riverwood, Alvor and Gerder, will send you to the Jarl. The people of the village and the Jarl both respect their opinions, and are therefore, they are the community leaders. Which is not an official title seen anywhere in the lore, but I think it's a fitting one for the task they have. So the title is just made up by me, but their function is real. Then let's stay with our bear problem. Someone will be sent to the Jarl's palace. Once the palace is reached, he or she will come into contact with the Jarl's court. The size of this court varies per hold, but Whiterun has one of the only holds that has a full court. Its members are the Jarl, the Jarl's steward, the court mage, when there is one, the thanes of the hold, the Jarl's housecarl, in some holds, he's part of the, uh, the council, the guard commander, if there is one, and the family of the Jarl, if there is one. So with this council, the power lies predominantly with the Jarl. Nothing happens without the approval of the Jarl. Depending on the hold, however, the Jarl has outsourced some responsibilities. We see this heavily in Solitude, where all members have large responsibilities, but we also see holds where they are, well, they have virtually no power, and all the power lies with the Jarl. The Jarl there reigns supreme. So, each of these court members have their own responsibilities in a hold. Usually the steward is the most important. He or she can rule in the Jarl's absence and may, can make small mundane de everyday decisions. The, uh, the steward's responsibilities vary per hold, as in some, in some holds the steward has nearly limitless power, and in some there is almost no power for them, in which case they are just an overglorified advisor. In the case of Whiterun, it's somewhere in the middle. The steward makes small decisions on behalf of the Jarl and deals with everyday problems and assigns people to the tasks which the Jarl has decided that has to happen. Then there's the court mage. 
They don't have any power. Not officially. They are the advisors of the Jarl in magical matters. However, they don't have any official power. But they can influence the Jarls and thus are an important member of government that you don't have to overlook. Then we have the House Jarls. Their power also varies a lot, but they are usually the bodyguards of the Jarl and sometimes even function as the secondary or primary military leader of the Hold. Iraleth, the House Jarl of the Jarl in Whiterun, has a large sway in military matters and often functions as the military commander and has official commands over the troops. This can cause for friction with other members, for example the Hold Guard Captain, who is the official commander of the guards. In some cases he or she commands the military by their own and sometimes they share this power with the House Carl. They don't have the power to make the choices for the Hold, both the House Carl and the military commander, but both of them have a huge say in how plans are executed, for example with our bear problem earlier. If the court has decided to send more men to Rorikstad, the commander or the House Carl will determine who they will be, who their leader is, how many, etc. Finally, we have the Thanes and the Jarl's family members. They are advisors, however. In some cases, they do hold real power over the hold. In the example of Solitude, for example, some of the Jarl's power has been transferred into the Thanes of the hold, and, there, and they will significantly hold a lot of power. But in the case of Whiterun, the Thanes and the family of the Jarl are only advisors. So, let's say our errand boy from Rorikstad arrives at the palace. Who will he contact? If the court is not in session, he will go to the steward of the hold. The steward will then decide if more troops will be needed. For example, if the steward gives an answer that's not to the liking of the people of Rorikstad. He will say, eh, I think the guards can deal with them, them uh, themselves and I'm not gonna send more troops. Then the errand boy may request, or other representative, may request to go to the Jarl with the problem if the steward's answer is not good to their liking. A bit like how you can request a higher court in some justice systems. Then, when you go to the Jarl and you propose the question to the Jarl, the Jarl's word is final. So the Jarl says, no, or the Jarl says, sure, have some more guards. Then he will tell the steward to fix it. The steward will then execute the plan. The steward will go to the house hold, hold guard captain, <laughs> not the house girl. The house girl only takes commands from the Jarl and the hold guard captain will, lo um, will al always have the final word in it if it's not from the Jarl. If it's from anyone else, a matter to the guards, it's always the hold captain. The house girl only has to say something about the military if the Jarl requests something. So, the steward asks the hold guard captain to fix it. The hold guard captain will look at his forces and will think, hmm, who will I send? He will make a force ready for embarkment to Rorikstad. He will appoint a commander, he will say who it is, uh, he, he will fix all the, uh, all the matters of military. Okay, but let's say there's a different problem, not, 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 no longer the bear problem. Let's say, for example, um, Whiterun is suffering economically because the Jarl of Falkreath is harassing Whiterun hold with extensive trade embargoes. Because he does not agree with, for example, a road that is being built around his hold through Whiterun instead of through his hold, which will limit his trade. Then we have an interhold problem on the government level. So first of all, what will happen then is the Jarls will try to find a solution among themselves. The Jarl of Whiterun will go to the Jarl of Falkreath or vice versa, and they will talk about it and they will see if they can find a solution that's fitting for both of them. If they can't find a solution, they will go to Skyrim's High King. The High King also has a court, and it's called the Moot. It's filled with the Jarls. We don't know exactly how the court between Moots look like, but I expect a bit the same as the Jarls' courts. But since we don't know a lot about it, I won't speculate. So we have our road problem. The two Jarls will go to the High King and ask for his judgment. The High King's judgment is final as far as we know. However, I personally speculate, I cannot press this is, not, is enough, this is not canon, this is just speculation by me, that our two problem Jarls can also call in the full mood for a vote if the problem is severe enough and they disagree with the judgment of the High King. In the same manner you can ask for the Jarls judgment instead of the Steward's judgment. And this would make sense, but we have no proof for that unfortunately, so I won't speculate on that any further. This is the general outline of the province of Skyrim's government. It's always been this way, but depending on the choice you made during the Skyrim Civil War, the process from here will be a bit different. So let's cover this very shortly. So let's start with the Stormcloak side. What if, in the case of an independent Skyrim, 
The land is attacked by forces from, for example, High Rock. Then the High King, with his mood, will decide what to do about the threat. Will they send an emissary? Will they send forces of their own to combat the threat? Etc. If Skyrim is under Imperial control, things become a bit more bureaucratic. Depending on the severity of the problem, Skyrim's High King will go into action. He can either do this by going directly to the Emperor himself, if the problem is severe enough, or he can go to the Elder Council, uh, of which he is a part. He can then just bring it up during a session. Then the Emperor or the Elder Council, with the Emperor in it, will decide what to do for the province in case of a foreign attack. Then the Imperial Legion will come into action, but for example if it's attacked by High Rock this time, not an independent nation, they will just try to sort it out in the Elder Council, as the Kings of High Rock are also part of the Elder Council. But that is a topic for another video, as I really want to do a Government of the Empire or Government of Cyrodiil video one day. With that said, leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, uh, do all those things. If you want personal contact with me, my Instagram and Discord are always in the description. And if you want to support me on Patreon, that would be amazing. On Patreon you get access to some small vlogs, some, uh, some voice recordings I've made uh, to, to sort of share my opinion on the channel. But also uh, my very own soundtrack. Uh, you, get a, you get a free high quality download if you sub, uh, support Patreon. And with that said, I will see you all in the next lore video. Bye bye.